بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Fasting has many great wisdoms behind it or has a lot of wisdom behind it. And when we're speaking of fasting, we're talking about the Islamic fasting. We're talking about the prescription from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made fasting, as we've mentioned, a means to attain taqwa, God fearfulness, to be aware of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be weary of his prohibitions and encouraging us to those things which he has ordered us to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al kareem Ya ayyuh al-ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba al-ladheena min qablikum la'allukum tattakoon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah Qala subhana O you who believe It has been prescribed for you fasting Similar to the way it's been prescribed for those who came before you In order that you will attain God fearfulness Meaning that you will avoid the prohibitions and you will enjoin what Allah has commanded you to do. And his messenger Ali after salatu was salam. So one of the first wisdoms is that fasting is a means to attain taqwa, piety. Another wisdom from fasting is that the person who fast, they experience and have the opportunity to reflect upon the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ni'amillah. And this is because when fasting you feel, you go through a lot of changes physically, mentally, and spiritually if you're fasting properly. And that, of course, physically you might have the difficulty, you might experience Fatigue, uh, of course, thirst and hunger. So then you're able to be in tune with things a bit more and reflect more so by fasting. So it's a great chance. It reminds you of the ni'mah. And as we sp spoke about before, previously, prior to this sitting, we spoke about the importance of or the enjoyment, the person who fasts, what they experience when they break their fast. The, the two uh, times in which they experience extreme pleasure, and the one is when they break their fast. The second is when they meet Allah on the Day of Judgment, having fasted, that Allah will reward them immensely. And may Allah bless us to be of all those who receive His great blessings and reward. The third benefit, or hikmah, is that fasting is a type of training and a way in which we educate ourselves. It's a way in which we train our desires. And we can never truly appreciate that unless you fast and you fast and you really gain the benefit. And me, myself, personally, what I've experienced in my life is that fasting and seeking the knowledge by reading the Quran and trying to memorize the Quran and things like this is exercises that uh, it trains your desires. Because if you want to memorize something from the Quran, you have to keep doing you, you The only way you're going to do it is by putting your time in. By continuously reading, reading, reading until Allah opens that up and favors you to memorize what you're trying to memorize. And likewise, when fasting, it's training your desires, putting it in perspective. Yeah, we could easily follow our desires and just every time we want something, we do it. And unfortunately, that it shows us the beauty of Islam, that wisdom in fasting, how it contradicts extreme materialism and 
uh, what we see existentialism or, or, or what what have you these various philosophies that have in that have penetrated our daily living especially really around the world but especially in the West just consumerism materialism just buying you have to have more items you have to have the latest sneakers they have to be two hundred dollars sneakers you have to have this uh, you know when you want to fulfill your desires it's gotten so bad that now that all you see all over the internet and everywhere is people speaking about how if they want something they gonna they're gonna get it and especially unfortunately this has to do with uh, people's sexual experiences that people believe hey if I wanna do my thing I'm gonna do it women believe have assumed that position and that role to where they believe hey if I have multiple partners it doesn't mean anything I don't wanna be committed right now I'm a professional I'm busy I don't want commitment. I want to get, if I want a man tonight, I'm going to have him. And one tomorrow, I'm going to have it. And if I want two the next day, I'm going to have it. This is the way, this is the, I wouldn't speak about it unless it has become a real reality. This is something that's been going on. This kind of uh, 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 extreme way in which people follow their desires. But Islam and the beauty of fasting is it trains those desires. Obviously, the Muslims shouldn't engage in any of that kind of activity anyway. In those various forms of having boyfriend and girlfriend and committing adultery and fornication. But, however, even the lawful thing, when fasting, it becomes unlawful. Meaning to have relations with your spouse. So Islam and fasting, it trains you. To, okay, you might have desires that time. You want to eat right now. You feel like, man, I could really use a sandwich. I could use something to drink. It's hot. It's a long day. But you refrain for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who will reward you in the next life and give you many blessings and benefits in this life, physically, mentally, and spiritually. So fasting is a tarbiya. It's a way of edu ed educating your, your nafs, your, yourself, your soul, uh, and, and your conduct and your and restraining yourself in this regard as far as restraining one's shahawat their desires the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prescribed fasting in the hadith of abdullah bin mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam qaal ya ma'ashara shabab man istata'a minkum alba' falyatazawwaj the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O oh, you youth, he addressed the the uh, the youth. Why? Because the youth, when you're in your perhaps your late teens, in your early uh, you know, maybe up to the thirties or what have you, you have Generally, people, that's the time when they have a lot of desires. Their desires are bursting forth in their 20s and, and, and prior to 20 and so forth. And during this time, uh, it requires a way to harness that, those desires, so that a person doesn't go crazy. That before they're 18, they're committing, you know, they have had so many sexual experiences. Well, that's not what Islam encourages us to do. But rather, the Prophet ﷺ gave us prescription. So he said, O oh, you Shabab, he addressed the youth. He said, Whoever <coughs> whoever amongst you uh, is able to marry has the, the ability, meaning the uh, the financial ability to take care of their spouse, their, their wife, or what have you. Uh, and perhaps the physical strength as well. But it's very known that uh, the ulama, they speak also about the, the, uh, the financial burden. Who's ever amongst you is able to, meaning they have employment or they have the means to take care of a family and put them in a house or, or you know, um, put them in a, a, provide accommodation and so forth. And the needs that a woman will require, a wife will require. The, the one who is able to do so has that means they should do so. They should marry. For verily, it is more, it helps you to restrain, lower your gaze so that you're not looking around. 
and better for your private parts, meaning so that you're not doing unlawful, you're not masturbating, you're not uh, committing adultery or fornication. And whoever is not able to do so, then they should fast. For verily, it, it makes weakness. You know, by fasting, it helps to lower your desires. And I believe uh, Ibn al-Qayyum has written about this on how those physical benefits, and you can even go, you know, to the many in the medical field, they speak about that, that fasting, of course, there's a relationship. And I have seen that directly, that when people are not fasting and they're indulging themselves. It, it seems like there's some sort of relationship. There Maybe there's something going on with the blood and, and the physical things by eating and drinking. But when you're full, sometimes it's easier to have relations. It encourages you. It's like you indulge in everything. But when fasting, maybe your blood sugar level is low. I don't really know all the, the science behind it. But it causes you, it, it makes you kind of weaker to where you have less desire to do those things. So it's a way of protecting yourself from the sin by fasting. Another hikmah or wisdom of fasting is that fasting, it helps to overcome the shaitan. Because the shaitan is, there's a shaitan with all, within all of us running through our blood. And by fasting, it restrains those devils. And it helps us to do the righteous and stay away from those things prohibited because the shaitan appeals to your desires. He wants you to do more haram. He wants you to follow your desires even more and be excessive. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, In the shaitan yajri min ibn Adam maj, uh, majri dem That the shaitan, verily the shaitan, runs through the, the son of Adam Alayhi salatu wasalam, the way in which blood runs through the body. So, letting us know the shaitan is with you is always going to encourage you to do evil. But fasting helps to harness that, helps to restrain and restrict. Another hikmah or wisdom of fasting is that fasting helps you to identify with those people who are poor, those people who are suffering and struggling, who don't have the means even for their daily subsistence, that by fasting, it helps you to at least identify and may perhaps empathize with them a bit. And so from that comes mercy from you that, hey, you reflect, well, when I was fasting or when I'm fasting to give charity. Wow, that guy could probably benefit a lot just from a bowl of rice. Let me buy that for him or what have you. Fasting encourages that. A last wisdom that we'll mention of fasting is that fasting, it helps to purify. This is a physical benefit that you'll see, and that's why in many other religions and ideologies and so forth and faiths that people, they encourage fasting, that they love to fast, even out of diet, a lot of people out of diet. And why? Because fasting, one of the wisdoms behind fasting is that it helps to purify the filth that was in, that the impurities that are within you. It's a way of detox and all of those things. Detox is, in fact, purifying yourself physically and perhaps spiritually because there's a relationship there. So by fasting and restraining yourself from eating and drinking, it helps to detox and helps to helps you uh, physically. And there are many other great benefits and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who gain maximum benefit from our fasting. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.